will now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out for the meeting tonight and also those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. I begin tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Jerome Willingham, followed by our invocation by uh, our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we pause this evening as always to give you thanks and to acknowledge your presence and your blessings in our lives individually and our, our lives collectively as the city of Jacksonville. We give thanks for the daily work of all of our city employees, and especially tonight for those that will be recognized for their life-saving efforts, and for those essential employees who worked during the recent snow and ice storm and served our city and citizens so well. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety, for their families. And as always, we ask your guidance and your direction to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Council, you each should have a, a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting along with the consent items. And at this time, I would entertain a motion. Move approval of the agenda and the consent items with the exception of number six, requesting that be deleted as being unnecessary at this time. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Next, we have approval of the minutes for the January 7, 2014 workshop meeting and the January 7, 2014 regular meeting. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the workshop meeting minutes and the regular meeting minutes of January 7, 2014 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion on this matter? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have a few presentations that we're going to make tonight. I'm proud to make, and uh, I'll come around up front. <clears throat> These first uh, recognitions we're going to give tonight, I'd like to ask, uh, uh, first I'd like to ask Chief Unero, the Director of Public Safety, and Cap uh, John Reed. At this time, I would like to recognize and call up to the front here, Chief Jerry Hardison, Captain Sheldon Kinsey, Captain Robert Jackson, Firefighter, Firefighter 2 Scott Brown, Firefighter 2 Jeremy Fountain, On January 12, 2013, Squad 3 was dispatched to 597 Freedom Way in response to a head-on collision. Upon arrival, paramedics and the Jacksonville Police Department were already on the scene. One vehicle had two occupants, one of the occupants deceased and the other trapped and in need of quick extrication due to life-threatening injuries. The weather was extremely foggy which made things more difficult for all involved. Squad 3 stabilized, started stabilizing the vehicle and extrication with hand tools until the arrival of additional manpower and equipment. Once Engine 3, Battalion 1, and Rescue 1 arrived, hydraulic tools were available and deployed. 
The intensity of this extrication was far beyond a normal extrication. The roof had to be removed and the dash had, dashboard had to be lifted off the subject. Once this was done, the subject's foot had to be released from the brake pedal. The quick actions and initiative of the members of the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services not only successfully extricated this driver, but gave the paramedics the badly needed time to render uh, life-saving aid. And at this time, uh, Chief Unero, you have uh, some recognition certificates to give to these gentlemen. I'd also like to mention those that aren't here tonight. Uh, driver Operator 2, Randy Watson. Driver Operator 1, Kenneth Netzik. Driver Operator 1, Eric Sanquist. And Firefighter, let's see. Firefighter 2, Jeremy Fountain. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. For the next presentation tonight, I'd like to ask Council Member Jerome Willingham if he would join me up front. And also, uh, I'd like to call up some of the members of our Community Development uh, Advisory Committee and staff that are present. very pleased to announce that the city's community development division was awarded the 2014 Audrey Nelson Community Development Achievement Award. This award was presented on January 24, 2014 during the National Community Development Association 2014 Winter Legislative and Policy Meeting held in Washington, D.C. The award is presented to communities who exemplify outstanding achievement in service to neighborhoods and their lower income residents. The Community Development Division was recognized for the successful implementation of the Downtown Housing Initiative, a public-private partnership created to revitalize downtown Jacksonville. CDBG funds, home funds, and private funds have been used to acquire, demolish, construct, and construct new homes and rehabilitate dilapidated structures in the target area bordered by Court, Newberry, Ford, and Poplar Streets. Down payment assistance was also provided to assist first-time home buyers, buyers with the purchase of new homes. In addition to the partnership with private builders, cross-departmental collaboration has been utilized as well. The Jacksonville Fire Department used abandoned structures for live fire training exercises. The Street Department assisted with the demolition and debris removal and community resource officers help ensure a safe community exists. Uh, and I, I do want to congratulate you in receiving this award. And Council Member Willingham, I'm sure you have some comments you would like to make as the uh, Council Liaison to Community Development. Thank you, Mayor. I took off work to go receive this award because it was such a distinguished honor. I was really proud of the job that our staff had done, community development staff, with the leadership of our city manager, Dr. Richard Woodruff, in their creativity and coming up with this program. It was uh, dear to me, and it's a tremendous accomplishment, accomplishment to be able to provide this affordable housing. Audrey Nelson, and that's the, uh, the name of the award, was a, the first uh, deputy executive secretary for the National Community Development Association. And um, it, it, she exemplified what 
the city of Jacksonville has exemplified the dedication and the commitment to the housing needs. She was from the city of Chicago and um, she must have done a good job there because she died at the age of 29 and you see how she's being honored. And um, so it was a, a tremendous honor. The, um, there were nine recipients of this award and we were competing uh, against cities from all over the country. Uh, Quincy, Massachusetts was one of the winners, Shreveport, Louisiana, and Miami, Florida. So we were in distinguished company and you can go online and see the PowerPoint presentations if you go to the National Community Development Association website. And I would encourage you to do that. Uh, I took a little liberty and tampered with, <laughs> with our PowerPoint um, because it wasn't part of the project, but I wanted them to see the genesis of our efforts. So I put in the warehouses that used to be along the railroad tracks where the beautiful uh, Riverwalk Crossing Park is now, and I just thought it would give it context. And so it was well received, and it was just a pleasure to be there, and this is very important for our community. And it, it, it started with our leadership, it started with our committee members who review and counsel and give good recommendations, and so we're uh, really uh, proud to have uh, the members that are here tonight, and just thank you all for, for a wonderful job in community development. Take just a second. I know some of you just came for the presentations. If you want to take a few moments, opportunity to leave, uh, go right ahead, and we'll resume the meeting in about a minute. So that brings us to agenda item number one for this evening. This is a public hearing on extraterritorial jurisdiction boundary amendment um, reduction of the area, and it's specifically 1251 Burgall Highway. Ryan King, our senior planning or planning and permitting administrator, will be presenting this item. Ryan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you may recall, middle of last year, the city staff brought before you an ETJ reduction. After having given the public hearing notifications that we were required to do uh, according to North Carolina General Statutes, the Blue Creek Baptist Church came in and requested the opportunity to have their property removed from the ETJ. At that time, we had already done the advertising, so we weren't able to add that to um, the list for City Council to consider and guided them to make a request, which they did, that would basically remove a piece of property that they own. Uh, they actually own two pieces of property. They own the church site here that's currently in the county jurisdiction. It's not in the ETJ. And they own the vacant lot next door, which is the last parcel that's in the city's ETJ. 
So if they were to do a, an expansion, they would be dealing with multiple jurisdictions. So that's why they requested that basically the ETJ line be pulled back so that this piece is no longer in the city's jurisdiction. And that's what this request is before you tonight. So city staff and the planning advisory board is recommending that city council amend the map and the ETJ boundary by removing that parcel from the city's jurisdiction. Um, it's near the intersection of, of Burgall Highway and Richlands Highway. And go back to the aerial. Um, the Yop Road area, the new Walmart is over here in this, this area, just to kind of give council a reference point. Be happy to answer any questions that city council may have at this time. Uh, Ryan, why, why do you think the church wasn't in the ETJ to begin with? You just came right to that. It's with the with the laws you've got to follow identifiable features we couldn't go beyond one mile so it's okay. one of those things to where we we couldn't do that and we didn't look necessarily at oh well that person owns two lots side by side and that area wouldn't make it so we backed you know we didn't back away from it we just kind of went to the maximum extent that we could to that one mile line any other questions around thank you thank you this time I'll recess the regular council meeting and open up a public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, with that, don't see anyone. I'll close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to consider the proposed uh, request. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the ETJ boundary amendment and associated amendments to the um, official zoning maps as presented. <clears throat> second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item number two is also a public hearing on a rezoning to increase the B1 portion by decreasing the amount of TCA on parcel 38-30 uh, on Western Boulevard. And Amanda Barman, our, one of our planners, will present this item. Amanda. I'm sorry, Abigail. <laughs> I'll rename you before it's all over. Again. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm here before you tonight to present a rezoning. This is an undeveloped parcel near the intersection of Western and Gum Branch. Here's an aerial of the parcel. It's right next to the plantation um, apartments to sort of give you a frame of reference. Parking Associates submitted an application to sort of shift the zoning lines. It's currently split zoning between TCA and um, B1, and they want to increase the portion of B1 and decrease the portion of TCA. Here's the existing line today. You'll see the pink is the B1, and they just want to shift it back. They are increasing the B1 by uh, 17 acres, and the current future land use has this parcel and the parcel next to it designated as high density residential. And as you'll see in the staff report, we would suggest that you advise staff to update that with our yearly CAMA or our biannual CAMA update to mixed use as it is with the surrounding property. And that makes more sense with the split zoning between B1 and TCA. The mixed use uh, future land use designation accommodates both commercial and residential, which would make more sense to have the TCA, the townhomes, and the B1 portion. This is a picture of the existing site. You'll see it's undeveloped. Across the street is also undeveloped. This is across Western. Looking to the west is looking towards Gum Branch. And then looking to the east is towards the plantation apartments. Staff and planning board have both recommended approval of this based on findings of facts A, C, and D, and that it advances the public interest. And we'd also recommend that you advise staff to do that future camp CAMA land use update to make findings of fact be in the affirmative as well and make it consistent with the comprehensive plan. Okay. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Council, any questions for Abigail? Thank you. This time I'll recess the regular council meeting and open up the public hearing on this matter. Is there anyone present wishes to speak on this issue? Mr. Parker. John Parker, 306 New Bridge Street. 
I come so seldom now I had to stand up. I don't really have much to add other than, as the owners say, as it is today, they do not have an opportunity, but with the proposed change, we may have an opportunity to make something happen here. And that's what that's really about. If I could answer any questions, I would be glad to try. Any questions, Mr. Parker? I have a question for Abigail, if that's possible. Thanks, John. Abigail, through the changes of the uh, CAMA update, will that also give the ad adjacent parcels some flexibility? Um, yeah, right now this is the CAMA map. You'll see the mm -hmm. pinkish color is the mixed use designation and the orange tan color is high density residential. So we would actually look at changing both these parcels. Just it makes sense to have the whole area mixed use to okay. have a commercial residential kind of meld of land uses rather than these two both being residential. So it wouldn't be just a finger besides two TCAs? No, we would yeah. look okay. at doing both of those parcel and you would probably see that I think um, it's we will do the next one in June. Okay. So you would see these two parcels and with any of the other um, updates that come along between now and then. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else wish to speak on this matter? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing, reconvene the regular council meeting. Council, you're being asked to uh, <clears throat> zoning and also to uh, have uh, amend the future land use designation in the upcoming biannual CAMA update. Mr. Mayor, moves to approve the rezoning request based on the findings of fact being found in the affirmative A, C, and D, and B, approved condition upon that being amended to conform with the future land use designation with the upcoming CAMA update. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Council, that brings us to our first section of public comment for the evening. I don't have anyone signed up for public comment, but if someone came in after the uh, list was taken up and you wish to speak by all means uh, please indicate by raising your hand I take it uh, I don't see anybody okay so I guess that will take us to our reports for the evening and uh, I'm going to start with uh, council member Willingham no report Mr. Bittner no report this evening thank you Mayor Pro Tem Lazar no report Mayor what's going on here uh, council member Thomas <laughs> no report <laughs> It's early in the year. Hey, you have the floor. <laughs> Just a quick notice from the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Um, just want to say to the city of Jacksonville, we are in need of individuals to nominate business and residential appearances awards. So please feel free to call into the city or to go and visit our website and nominate those businesses and residential areas that are... Um, will be recognized in terms of their beautification for the city of Jacksonville. And also, if any group or individual wants to adopt a program, we are still accepting applications for parks, streams, trails. So please call the city hall or the, visit the city website in order to adopt a program if you're interested. Very good. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything except for I do want to take a moment to uh, uh, congratulate uh, the the staff of this city for the fine job uh, that you did during this last latest snow emergency we had and i'm talking about from the top dr woodruff all the way all the way through the organization uh it was a great team effort that was put forth uh you know i, I we caught a little criticism i saw in a couple of little uh letters to the editor but you know those were things that just can't be overcome sometimes uh you know in a situation like we had uh you know, we had a lot of ice under snow, and ice is kind of hard to get off a roadway. Uh, you don't just go out and scrape it off. It doesn't work that way. But uh, all the responses by our emergency personnel, uh, top-notch uh, performance by our streets crews, our sanitation crews, everybody that, got, that had to function during this uh, uh, period of time, and also for all those employees that did have to fight their way in uh, on Thursday, I believe it was a Friday, Friday. On Friday, you know, even though the roads were still bad, to come in and make this city run, I appreciate 
all your efforts and all that you do for this city. And again, like I say, kudos. Uh, it, it's a good. Ex it, uh, it, it speaks speaks volumes about the leadership of this organization too. That to to have folks throughout the organization that, that take such pride in what they do for this city. Mayor, we will pass those comments on to all employees, and we do appreciate the uh, individual emails that many of you have sent thanking the employees. And that's probably a good place to begin. The, the staff does want to thank all of the citizens, because when the roads were bad and the police department asked for people to stay off the roads, the governor asked for people to stay off the roads, well, the fortunate thing, people did stay off the roads. Fortunately, the event was over in just two days, and we were able to get back to warmer weather. But again, we want to, the staff and I want to personally thank the citizens for working with us and cooperating. As you said, Mayor, we owe a lot of thanks to the people who work the emergency services. We have a tendency to forget that while we're at home at night in a warm bed, they're out there. We have a tendency to forget that when there's snow on the road and we're sitting home drinking hot chocolate, they're out there. And we appreciate the fine work that all of the city employees did in helping us get through this. A couple of matters that we do want to mention. We are now back on regular garbage schedule uh, because Carrie and the sanitation folks worked extra time on Friday. We were able to get completely caught up. So your garbage service this week and for the near future is going to be on a regular schedule. We don't have any holidays coming up for quite a while. We would also like to uh, remind everyone that we are going to be having some unified development ordinance public drop-ins, the UDO. What is that? That's your new zoning code and regulatory code for the city. Those drop-ins will be here at City Hall. They will begin on February the 25th, which is a Tuesday, and also again on March the 11th, which is a Tuesday. They will be here from 4 until 7 o'clock, and they will be in uh, the meeting rooms here at City Hall. Uh, lastly, Mayor and Council, we always thank you for the leadership you give. You set the tone, and we follow, and we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Winter. Mr. Carter? No report. No thank report. you, Mayor. Uh, this time I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.